One, two, three days away from the kickoff to the college football season, which begins with an all ACC matchup between Georgia Tech and FSU across the pond in Dublin, Ireland. So let's get to who's going to be leading the charge for FSU. DJ Uyunglele will be making his first start for FSU, and the former Clemson and Oregon State starter will make his debut for the Seminoles this weekend in Dublin. Now, when they face Georgia Tech, it's not his first time the fifth-year transfer has seen ACC conference play. He played three years at Clemson and started for two, and he also won both games against Georgia Tech. Now, a year spent in the Pacific Northwest helped DJU completely improve as a QB. Compare his numbers last year to his final year at Clemson, and everything was up, including a QBR of 81 that would have ranked just ahead of Jordan Travis for the highest in the ACC. And here's Mike Norvell from earlier in the week on his new QB. I could not be any more pleased with what I've seen, uh, you know, since he got here in January, even just his growth. You go through spring practice, uh, you know, we tried to put him in some really challenging situations. Well, you know, some of the things we wanted to see, you know, we wanted to see him have to respond to a disappointment. We wanted to put him in the hardest looks to see, you know, you know what was his decision making, how would he go, and then where would he, how would he grow from that? And, you know, I think he's just done an outstanding job. And, you know, he's playing with a lot of confidence grow through that fire. Now, Eric, what are the offensive expectations for FSU with DJU? Yeah, this offense is going to look a lot different uh, with DJU mm -hmm. at quarterback. You know, fans were so used to having Jordan Travis back there. A lot of creativity, a lot of movement. I think this team's going to be a lot more ground and pound. They are going mm -hmm. to run the football. You see the talented running backs that they have coming in. Transfer Williams, you know, from Alabama there. And of course, Toa Feely, the ACC championship MVP. Oh, and by the way, you got a 250 pound quarterback. Let's <laughs> line up with that big, nasty offensive line uh, that, that has just been together a ton. You're talking about all ACC cali caliber players there as well. Those guys are going to be set up for success, especially against this Georgia Tech defense that was horrific against the run last year. Now they're making changes, <laughs> but that's my game plan. Run it until they stop you over and over. Well, let's talk about defense, shall we? That, as for the defense, FSU lost quite a bit of production from 2023. Among others not returning include Renardo Green, who had the most pass breakups on FSU, Jared Verse, who had the most sacks and tackles for loss, and Jerrion Jones, who had the most interceptions. Sam, how does a team like Georgia Tech take advantage of that? Oh, you attack. You attack every single point on this defense. Why? You do it in the run game. This Georgia Tech running attack was 13th in the nation last year, number one. Number two, it's not just the running back room. It's the quarterback as well. Haynes King can play. Last year, over 2,800 yards passing, over 700 yards rushing. And so this is a physical football team. I get it. Defensively, they didn't do great as far as stopping the run, but they want to run the ball. And Haynes King can do it all. We talked about the 2,800 yards passing, 25-plus touchdowns, 700 yards rushing, 10-plus touchdowns. Only him and Jaden Daniels, last year's second overall pick, That's right. were the players to do that, at least right. Power 5 players. Now, you talk, start about talking about players in the ACC to have numbers that surpass those. You're starting to talk about guys like Lamar Jackson, guys like Deshaun Watson. And so, Haynes King is extremely underrated. Right. And if I'm Georgia Tech, I'm going to attack the middle of this defense, especially with no Braden Fix, no Jared Verse. When attack, attack, attack. Yeah. They, they, they reloaded on that defensive line. I mean, they, they'll, we, they will be ready for that, but I think you're absolutely right. Haynes King, underrated, would not be shocked at all if he ends up first-team All-ACC quarterback when it's Ooh, all said and done. Ooh, okay. Well, we'll keep an eye out on that. Now, College Game Day is back, and they're going international for the first time. Reese and the gang kicks off the 2024 season from Dublin, Ireland, starting at 9 a.m. on Let's ESPN, go, followed by the Georgia Tech-Florida State game at noon. Now it's official, Jalen Daniels will be under center when number 22 Kansas opens the season against Lindenwood next week. Now while he has battled injuries, the Jayhawks have him surrounded with top talent as their top four wide receivers are returning. Now Jayhawks coach Lance Leopold is excited by what he's seen from him in fall camp. I've seen a lot of good things from Jalen Daniels in the last 10 days. And uh, he hasn't missed anything. He is... Uh, He's played well, and he's confident, he's excited, his enthusiasm is contagious, and um, we all know that it's important for him to stay healthy, and, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's good to see. 
definitely good to see. You never want to be plagued by injuries. Now, Sam, with Jalen Daniels healthy and on the field, in what ways does that improve Kansas offense? Well, it makes them multi-dimensional. Yeah. So Kansas has been known, better yet, Lance Leipold has been known as a running quarter, or running uh, head coach. So when he was at Buffalo, they were one of the top rushing teams. When he was at University of Wisconsin-Whitewater, one of the top rushing teams. Now that he's been at Kansas over the last three years, they've been in the top 10, top five when it comes to running the football. But Jalen Daniels is a pass first, run second type of athlete at quarterback. Yes, he can run it, but he slings it all over the yard. So if he's healthy, remember not too far uh, back, they started off 5-0, and then he got injured, then all of a sudden they tank. If he's healthy, this team can be competing for Big 12 championships for years to come. Well, and I mean, we were talking about a Heisman Trophy making no. its way yeah. to Kansas. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that guy is so electric. And what he does, I mean, when, when you have a mobile quarterback like that, that is pass first. Yeah. He, he wants to throw it. He's going to dance around. He's going to move around and then take that shot downfield. As an offensive lineman, I love that because guess what? <laughs> I don't have to be perfect. I can miss a guy or, or try to run him, and then he, he's gone making a big play. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, nobody's perfect, Eric. I will let you know on that but like it, well yeah Guys maybe close. Sam maybe Sam's a little perfect but Eric what are your realistic expectations for Jalen well I, I think first of all if he truly is fully healthy yeah. the sky's the limit I mean again yeah. we were talking about a Heisman Trophy uh you know participant there and a guy that was going to end up in New York so I, I think they're right there sniffing a conference championship I think he's that dynamic of a player and to your point like that's what so Lance Leipold I got a chance to to train with the Buffalo football team back in 2019, my last year in the NFL. Yeah. I was with the Bills, ended up getting in, well, injured before, got cut. I didn't know what I was going to do. I got a chance to meet Coach Leipold, and he said, hey, come train with our team. All of a sudden, Buffalo, they were building and building. It became this excellent football team before yeah. I got there, and I got a chance to see it up close and personal. Fast forward, comes into Kansas, and all he talked about was belief. Right. A lot of the players did not believe. And he said, man, yeah. my goal is to help this, 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 this state to believe in our football again. He put it in his contract to say, we got to build a new stadium. we got to get some new facilities. So we're seeing the belief happen yeah. within the locker room. It's expanding to the city, now expanding to the state. Uh, I'm excited about Kansas. The power of the belief. We love it. It's a big it. deal. We love it. It's a big deal. ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips, welcome into the show. Thanks, Victoria. Now, we just talked about the matchup going on in Ireland. What are you looking forward to most out there? Well, the start of the college football season. Yeah, <laughs> like, we We've been ready for two months or so. What's going on? What took us so long? <laughs> Really, I, I think it's a, a chance for the ACC to own that weekend. Um, two terrific programs, as you described. A Georgia Tech team is on the come, second-year coach. Yeah. A Florida State team that should have been in the playoff last year, coming off an undefeated season, our ACC champion. It should be a re uh, really incredibly intriguing matchup. The game is sold out. you got yes. a lot of folks from the States going to Ireland. Um, so it would be, a, just a, again, a, just a terrific way to kick off the ACC season. Mm -hmm. And that's week zero, but week one, I have to I have to literally look in my notes because you have <laughs> quite the schedule. Okay, every ACC team will be in action with games starting Thursday. We've got NC State, UNC, and Wake Forest all playing and then running all the way through Labor Day with BC, BC and FSU. How crazy is your travel schedule going to be? It's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's when you say goodbye to the wife and the kids yeah. for a period of time, say I'll check back with you when we get through December or so. Uh, listen, it's my honor to be the commissioner of the ACC, and, and part of it is you show up in support yeah. of your schools. Um, and I'm excited about the non-conference season in particular, but Labor Day weekend special for the ACC because we will play games on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, we'll have a day of rest on Sunday as a league, and then we'll, we'll finish on Monday in Tallahassee. Well, I, lo I love what you brought up there, Commission, the out-of-conference you know, scheduling. And, yeah. and the ACC has the most difficult in the entire country what does it mean to take advantage of that? And what will that do for the league if the ACC is able to capitalize there? Yeah, I'm, I'm really, uh, Eric, I'm really proud of our coaches and our athletic directors that have taken that approach about non-conference scheduling. As you mentioned, we play 27 Power Four teams as well as Notre Dame during the non-conference. Nine of those teams are ranked. And I think as we saw last year, if you can win some of those games, most of those games, you can really set a good narrative uh, for your particular football program. But what's nice about it, though, is, and the three of you know this well and talk about it often, is one loss now will not be a, a killer for right. you. Yes. You know, you can play some great non-conference games and get yourself right for conference season and, and stub your toe maybe once, maybe twice, um, and still have a chance to be in that 12-team playoff. Yeah. Commissioner, with the ever-changing landscape in college football, what keeps you up at night? Sam, it's a great question. I, I think it's just the sustainability of a game that we love. 
and it, it, it could be the health and safety of players, right, of playing too many games and the expanded playoff. It could be the financial piece of it. Um, it's a game that needs to be cared for. Uh, and so when I think about just college football in general, I don't, any, I don't want any of us to take it for granted. We have to be really good stewards and caretakers of it. We, gotta, we have to learn with what we've seen as we go forward. Um, but I, I trust that we'll get to the right place. But overall, just in college athletics, you want the sustainability to help kids at all various yeah. levels, right? Not just Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, NAIA. That's the beauty of college sports. Well, you, you bring up that expanded playoff, and I know there's, there are concerns about player safety and playing 17 games. Somebody's going to have to do that. And then when we expand again, if that so happens. But how about the opportunity to have multiple bids? How important is that? you know, for the ACC, and just how are you looking at this 12-team playoff? It's, it's really important, Eric. You know, we went from a four-team to a 12-team, tripled the field, and we were at about 3% of FBS teams that got into the playoff, um, you know, prior to this year. Now we'll be at about 9%. That's, two of you know really well, that's what every, I think, young football player wants to compete for is a national championship. So to enlarge the field um, has been great. But I think this really helps the ACC. I really do. Um, it's a chance for our teams across the board to play for a national championship. And you don't have to just win your conference championship. If you do, you, you have that automatic yeah. you know, invite in the rest of it. But you could, you, there's lots of cases where there's a one-loss team in your conference that has played a great schedule that got beat for one particular reason or another on a, on a Saturday, and it just doesn't end their journey. So... It is important, and I think that's what all of our leagues are looking at. You want to be mul a multiple bid league, just like it is for the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, the, the big topic of conversation is now it expands coast to coast. How does that expansion grow, not just in the football, but for the ACC all around? Yeah, Victoria, it, to me, it really is a chance now to have a national conference. We've been regionally yeah. based on the East Coast. We spread our wings and, you know, got into the Midwest a little bit, and but to, a chance to be in the state of Texas and the state of California, two really great fertile grounds of recruiting, uh, but also viewership, right? And, and yes. for them to get ACC football and yeah. for them to get the ACC network, uh, it's really important. And I think um, I'm excited to see Cal, Stanford, and SMU uh, jump in. They've all had success at different periods in their history. I think they'll add to the ACC. Uh, and I look forward to getting to, to some different venues again with the ACC product. I love that, man. When, when, just quickly, quickly before we let you go, when, when folks are tuning in and they see ACC teams, what, what do you want them to come away with each and every time they turn on the television and see one of our teams? Yeah, you're a product of it. So that, <laughs> I should really let you answer the question, Eric. We have one right but, here. Let me just tell you something. There's a few things. One is it's a conference of, 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 of quarterbacks. We have 13 quarterbacks that have thrown for 3,500 yards and 20 touchdowns in our conference starting this season, Ooh. right? Eight quarterbacks are likely to start, I think, have named, been named starters for the NFL season. So that's 25% of the NFL, NFL. So great players, this particular situation, uh, quarterbacks. But we're, we're a, a tough nose group. I just yeah. think we have tough nose coaches and hard, hard nose, um, you know, punch you in the mouth kind of football. And that's what I think ACC football is, and I think it's representative of the coaches that we have. We have great skill players and all the rest of it, but we can get in the trenches and fight you and play well. And I think last year, when I look at how we performed, uh, SEC, great conference, we were 7-5 and five, uh, mm -hmm. against the SEC last year. And so uh, we'll have a chance uh, this year to, to show the country ACC football, and, and uh, we're testing ourselves early with the non-conference schedule. Yeah. That chance is just three days away. Come Commissioner, on. thank you so much for joining us today, and safe travels to Ireland. My pleasure. Thanks. <laughs> now it's time we do our own numbers crunch, college football live edition. So let's pick them. Now we've got Eric, who let's is go. the captain of Team ACC, and then we've got Sam, who is captain <laughs> of a Big 12. So let's make some <laughs> picks, shall we? Come All right, on. Sam, playing four seasons in the Big 12, you know a thing or two about this conference. Friends, with 16 teams now, who's your championship pick? My championship pick is the da -da -da -da, Kansas Jayhawks. Oh, the reason why is this. If you want to be the best, you have to beat the best. What did Kansas do last year? Last year, they beat Oklahoma. A few years back, they beat Texas. This team has been rising 
week in, week out, year in, year out. And if they stay healthy, if Jalen Daniels stay healthy, this is one of the most dangerous teams in the Big 12. And not to mention the running game. This is the fourth most efficient offense in all the college football behind LSU, Oregon, Georgia. So Devin Neal, Daniel Highshaw, your running backs at Kansas, those are names you need to know. I hear you. I hear you. Let's go on down to the ACC because Miami – they're back, baby. Oh. The U is rolling, and they got a quarterback. Let me just tell you all about this. Cam Ward is going to set the ACC on fire. This dude is electric. The things that he can do with his legs, get out in space, and very similar to what we were talking about with Jalen earlier, he wants to throw the ball. He wants to escape, keep his eyes downfield. But here's the differentiator to me. Big, nasty offensive line. Big, nasty defensive line. They are going to play bully ball and hit people right in the face. Bully ball. Okay. Well, Come that on. sounds like so much fun. All right, Eric, who's your, <laughs> who's your sleeper team? Sleeper team. This is a little bit of a different one because the Virginia Tech Hokies, they've got everybody back. And Blacksburg is lit. Getting back to Saxburg on that defensive side of the ball. But to me, it comes down to quarterback play. What is this young man able to do through the air? We've seen so much from him. The growth from Kyron Drones and all these weapons that are back. Number one in FBS in return offense I think the natural growth that we will see from him year one to year two as a starter is enormous in that growth you also add Bashel Tootin in the backfield look out for that one-two punch hey look out for that siren <laughs> in Ames I don't know why because that's what I played in Ames I played against these guys mm -hmm. every time they score this huge siren goes off and they're going to be a lot of scoring going on because of Rocco Beck not Rocco's modern world the little yeah, yeah. shit kitchen <laughs> Rocco Beck is a dog. He was the Big 12 fresh offensive freshman of the year last year. Is that Anthony? First round pick in the NFL. New York Jets played over a decade in the NFL. This dude set records week in and week out for Iowa State. And so not only is the quarterback, but also they're a consistently coached team. Matt Campbell, one of the best coaches in all college football. Give me Iowa State. All right, we got to keep this moving. Multiple CFP bids. Is the Big 12 capable? <laughs> Answer is oh. no. I'm going to get to the point. I'm going to get to the point. I just want to get to the bad part first. I don't think I think only one team's going to make it to be a Big 12 champion. I don't think we have enough depth in the Big 12 to have multiple okay, bids. Okay, well, here's the deal. I think okay. that this oh. is where these two conferences, they aren't the Diverge. same. One's a little yeah. bit different than the other. You've got Miami, and then playoff disruptor. Can I go ahead and get yeah, to that? Yeah, get in there. Get this in is there. my playoff second disruptor. team in the playoff. The Tigers, they're back, baby. Wait till you see this defensive line, offensive line. K Club. You want defensive there. line, offensive line. That's Go right. Utah. One of the most physical teams <laughs> in all of football. And if Cam Rising is healthy, this team can make some noise come playoff come time. Let's go. Ooh, let's go. All right. Well, you heard it from the experts. Fun fact: they both were captains of their team. They're well That's qualified. Right, and you're our captain, then Victoria. I'm the captain you're our captain. Here. All right. Captain, for College Football Live, he's Sam. He's Emac. I'm Victoria. Thanks for hanging.